At your next gathering, are you gonna need solo cups? Are you gonna use solo cups? Maybe. My name is Andy, and this is EPS Garage. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these fun, easy projects that are useful, and they actually sell in markets. I've sold quite a few of these. So please, if you like the video, hit like, subscribe, and if you wanna see notifications on future videos, go ahead and ring that bell. So from here, I'll show you how this is done. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut the lumber pieces, how to drill the holes, show you how to make the bottom, show you how to wrap it all up and put it together, and then I'm gonna show you what I do to finish it. I'll tell you a couple colors that I know that sell and how it's used. So stay tuned. Okay, the materials you're gonna need to make this cool little contraption is pine lumber. It's what I use, one by four. I use the good pine. One that's already sanded and it's usually in pretty good shape at your big box store. You're also gonna need a saw, table, table saw or miter saw. Um, miter saw, I mean, sorry, table saw will be the best if you have one. If not, I'm sure you can get by with a skill saw and miter saw, it should be fine. Plywood, I use three quarter inch for the bottom piece. Drill bit and drill. Sandpaper, sand, sander of some type to get it smooth finish and the finish of your choice. So you'll need those items to successfully make this. The grain pattern on this pine was uh, really good. I, I was surprised that I found it in the big box store. So I nabbed it up pretty quick. I used my digital level here. That digital level is awesome. I highly suggest you get one. I'll link it. This is a template I made for setting up the saw blade against the fence. This way I can always get the same cut each time. Also notice that I'm using a spacer between the fence and my board. You don't ever want to do a cross cut up against your fence that could cause kickback. So I use those clamps, um, Rockler fence clamps, they work great. Once this is all set up, it goes really fast. Just flip the board over and make your next cut. All right, quick and easy. You saw that with the template, set it up, flip the board over really fast. I mean, eight foot board went in no time. These on the outside, measure five and a half. I don't have official plans. I don't use SketchUp or anything that yet. I plan on to, but I don't yet. I hand draw everything. So I'll see about what I, I'll put dimensions and so forth in the description um, to best help you, but I'll try to give you all that on here. So this is just a one by four. I use the more premium pine that's cut and sanded. Uh, comes out better, less sanding at the end. However, one eight foot board gave me, will give me three. All right, I knew my math was off. It, you get four of these, four sets out of an eight foot board with one left over. Okay, the next step that we wanna do is we wanna cut a rabbit in the bottom and all, the, all these. I'm gonna set my saw up now. Um, I like to cut that rabbit on all these individual pieces. If you do the one long piece, sometimes your rabbits get uneven and so forth. With these, it'll be quick and easy. I'll just run them through. I got, I got a sacrificial board. I, I can put it right up against the board and it'll be quick, quick and easy. I am gonna use a dado stack. I'm just gonna get it to the thickness of the three quarter inch plywood that I'm gonna use for the bottom. Digital level, back to 90 degrees. Once I get that back to 90 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my cutting blade and apply my dado stack. I set my dado stack to the thickness of the plywood that we'll be using for the bottom. 
Here I'm just setting the blade about halfway to the thickness of the board. You can do it a little less, a little more, however you like. All right, y'all, another easy process complete. Got my dados in there, thickness of the plywood, did about half the thickness of the board. No biggie, ran them all through there. Easy peasy. I know you probably noticed I was using a Harbor Freight dado stack. I'm sure somebody will say something about it. Well, I like my Harbor Freight dado stack. It's worked well for me, so yeah. No, but for real, I'm gonna get a better one. It, it has done great for me, but I noticed with when I bought purchased my Freud blade that it was a world of difference. So I just imagine that the dado stack will be the same. Anyways, next step, let's tape these bad boys up and rubber band them. When gluing up items like this, I like to do this method. I tape the back, I put it up against a straight edge so I make sure they're all even. And you can align the grain any way you like. And then once you put that tape on there, you can flip them back over. For this project, I'm using the Tight Bond Thick quick and thick it dries clear so if you have any squeeze out you won't see it sometimes the squeeze out inside the box is a little difficult to get to so this is just what I use on things like this that I don't want to see any squeeze out you can use the regular yellow glue any way it work I mean you can even use M Elmer's glue if you like no fancy spreader here for me I'm just gonna use my fingers do you need some paper towels though? Oh! I was able to do that without knocking the camera over. Gotta get me a wireless mic, I tell ya. <laughs> I'm telling you, having to listen to that groan while I'm stretching over and over and over is, <laughs> is really cracking me up. When using masking tape, you can pull these over pretty tight. You can almost just pull it down. There's actually quite a bit of, I don't know, stretch that you can get and really pull it tight. Then of course, I just add the rubber bands for more. And then, wow, I think my rubber bands have become dry rotted. <laughs> that one just broke. They're probably all gonna break leaving them out in the garage. And I put, oh, this one up, three rubber bands. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a little gap on that one from where I dropped it. It fell off the end of the table saw, whatever. It'll be all right, sand it. We're gonna round all these off anyways. So that's really it. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the rest of these up. And next step will be tomorrow when I add the three quarter inch plywood bottom. Whew. We're about to get cold here in Texas. We're about to have a little winter storm mix, not usual. However, I'm a little prepared for it. Brought my outdoor heater in here so I can be a little warmer. Um, anyways, it's the next day. Gonna remove these band-aids, band-aids, <laughs> rubber bands. I'm gonna move the rubber bands and the tape. All right, so these measure out to four and three quarter by four and three quarter. All right, real quick, on my table saw, I cut the four and three quarter by four and three quarter, three quarter inch plywood. Fit like a dream. Now, just gonna put some glue. Oh, pretty tight. You can see the difference in color. New pine, old pine. I already had three quarter inch plywood, so I'm using that. And this is the brand new pine. This will yellow in time if you leave it natural. I usually stain or paint them, so depends on what you do. Okay, next step in this process is our drill holes for the Sharpies to set in. 
I use a centering finding gauge, this Miles Craft works really well. I'll link it below, run it on there, and it finds the center. That's simple. And then you just find the center across, mark your line, that's where you're gonna drill your hole. Drill size that I use is a 27 64th, and I use a pointed tip so I can be really precise. If you are going to do this by hand, I used to before I had a drill press, you may want to get something, some type of device where you make sure you're drilling straight. You don't want to come out the sides and it's really close on each side when using this. So. Ah, everyone's favorite part, the sanding. <laughs> really though. I'm gonna use two different colors on these. I've decided to go with the golden pecan on two of them. Reason being, is I got really pretty grain. I wanted a lighter stain for it, to show the grain. And then the other one is a classic gray. This one gives a good gray weathered look. Good seller. The gray and dark stains, I noticed sell more, as well as turquoise. At least here in Texas, sometimes I'll spray paint them turquoise. Those sell pretty good too, so. That gray, I don't know if that light's really truly showing it, but it comes out looking really cool. On every project I do, I like to put my initials and the month and year. I would like to get one of those fancy brands with my brand. However, I don't really have a full on brand yet. I'm still kind of working on that, figuring out what that's gonna be. But I do this for a couple of reasons. One, I know when I made it. And two, I know I made it. Like that. And then after that, all that's left is I'm gonna do a final quick lacquer, total lacquer on these. On these? All right, well, that's it, y'all. Pretty easy. I went ahead and lacquered these. Gave them a little buffing, nothing big. I still need to put the feet on them, like that. But that's really it. Your guests will like these, they'll have comments. You'll also sell these in a market, I promise you. Put them on next door, that's where I first sold them at. They sold, I sold 20 in the first week, I think. But anyways, that's it. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Till then, have fun, be safe. See you next time.